Dr. Olga M. Gashov with the Brevard County Health Department. I'm here today to talk to you about community-acquired methicillin-resistant staph aureus, otherwise known as MRSA. You may have heard a lot about MRSA on the news lately, and I'm here today to tell you ways that you can protect yourself and your family from contacting this infection. To start at the beginning, Staphylococcus aureus is a very common bacteria, often carried on the skin or the nose. About 25 to 30 percent of the general population actually does carry this bacteria around on their skin or nose. If you were to swab your skin, 30 percent of you would actually grow Staphylococcus aureus. This does not mean that you're infected with this bacteria, all it means is that we are what's called colonized. To cause infection, you would actually need a portal of entry or a cut or an abrasion in your skin where the bacteria would actually enter and then cause infection. Um, the most common skin infections that Staphylococcus aureus causes are simple skin infections like boils, abscesses, little pimple-like um, infections. More serious infections such as pneumonia or bloodstream infections are very rare in the general population. Antibiotics can be used to treat these staph infections, however sometimes they're not needed. A simple incision and drainage, which is actually cutting the infection and draining out the pus, may be all that's needed to treat these infections. Now, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus is the same bacteria that is resistant to methicillin, which is a uh, antibiotic like penicillin or amoxicillin. We do, however, have other antibiotics to which it is sensitive, such as Bactrim or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or doxycycline. So there are antibiotics that will treat methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. About 20 to 30 years ago, the first methicillin-resistant staph aureus infections occurred mostly in hospitalized patients or in nursing homes. However, lately we have been seeing more methicillin-resistant staph aureus infections in community-dwelling healthy people. Here in Brevard County, we are seeing more methicillin-resistant staph aureus, but we're also seeing more infections from methicillin-sensitive or the normal Staphylococcus aureus. Um, we're not quite sure what this means, whether more doctors are actually taking more cultures or whether we actually have more of this bacteria out there. Some common presentations of what we call community-acquired methicillin-resistant staph aureuses usually start out as what people call a spider bite. Usually starts as a little pimple. Sometimes it can progress to a boil or an abscess. Um, it's a bump. It may feel warm. It may be red. And it usually gets larger. And there may be some pus that actually drains from the site. In the communities where we see these MRSA infections are in prisons, among sports teams, um, especially sports teams where there's direct contact like football or wrestling, ho among homeless people, among men who have sex with men, in some daycare centers, and in some schools, although we haven't really seen transmission occur in schools. Um, the, this methicillin-resistant staph aureus, as mentioned earlier, is susceptible to doxycycline, clindamycin, rifampin, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. The typical antibiotogram for community-acquired MRSA, in other words, which antibiotics is it sensitive to, is displayed on this slide here. And you can see it's resistant to erythromycin, oxacillin, and penicillin, but we still have a large cadre of antibiotics from which to choose. Most physicians now, if you do present with a large abscess or a boil, will consider that it's community-acquired methicillin-resistant staph aureus or MRSA until proven otherwise and treat you accordingly. I also have some extra pictures here demonstrating what MRSA infections might look like. The factors for transmission of community-acquired MRSA are what we call the five C's. Crowding, where there's people living together, um, as in a prison, where they can actually brush up against each other more frequently. Frequent contact, such as sports players who um, contact sports especially. Sometimes they also play when their lesions are not healed. If you have compromised skin, such as cuts, abrasions, or recent tattoos, which allow the bacteria to enter into your skin. Contaminated surfaces and shared items, such as towels or razors. Now, in fact, the surfaces have been shown to have very small 
transmission rates. In other words, the bacteria, if it's on a surface, after the pus dries in a minute or two, the bacteria is dead and cannot be transmitted by touching those surfaces. And then the last C is lack of cleanliness or just not practicing proper hygiene, such as hand washing. In terms of MRSA precautions in the schools or the work settings, children or workers who are infected or colonized with MRSA may attend school or work as long as their wound is covered and receiving treatment. So in other words, there's no reason to keep these children at home if their wounds can be covered and um, are not getting worse. Those who come in contact with these wounds need to use um, gloves and then wash their hands immediately afterwards. And any suspicious wounds or a wound that's not improving should be evaluated by a physician. How can you prevent MRSA? You can do this through good hygiene. In other words, wash your hands. Have plenty of sinks with soap and water. Daily showers have been shown to be helpful and regular laundering of clothing. Practice good skin care. If you have a break in your skin such as a, a bug bite, a cut, an abrasion, keep it clean, dry, and cover. Discourage sharing of personal items. Don't share towels, clothes, or razors, toothbrushes, or food. And once again, the environment has a very small role in transmission. It's very unlikely that you'll catch this from the environment. And any regular EPA disinfectant will eliminate MRSA. In terms of spreading infection, MRSA is spread through direct contact, and the final common denominator of that spread is generally your hands. So proven in study after study, the more frequently or the better that you wash your hands, the less likely that you'll actually become infected. So, in conclusion, the way that you can protect yourself and your family from coming down with MRSA is by practicing good hygiene, such as washing your hands, Two, don't share personal items such as towels or razors. And three, keep any wounds, cuts, abrasions clean, dry, and covered. If you have any further questions or concerns regarding MRSA, please contact the Brevard County Health Department. Thank you.